me keen to be happy again. Hey, Vinyl Community. Elliot here, Lazy Dogs Records. And I thought I'd do a little mishmash of things. Got some DCLT I'd like to share with you. I also won a contest recently. And I'd like to show you what I what I got from that contest. And a little of this, a little of that. I'll add to it some things I uh, couldn't fit in anywhere else. Uh, very, very uh, succinctly thought I'd put it in here. Uh, what are we listening to, first of all? Well, Go honky tonking around this town. Of course, a Hank Williams song there, but this is a uh, nitty gritty dirt band. Dirt, silver, and gold. It is, yeah, dirt, silver, and gold. It's kind of a compilation of, uh, of various dirt, nitty gritty dirt band album uh, songs from various albums. Shows them through the different years. It's a three set. They are the kings of the three LP album releases I do believe but I mean that's when uh, that one right there is 66 67 there's 68 69 and there's more contemporary to when this was released of course you know uh, among the other people who were at one time members of the nitty gritty dirt band they were a jug band when they started out uh, Jackson Brown was a member and there's some others I can't think of right off the top of my head that were uh, early stage members. Okay, so uh, first VCLT, uh, Mr. Rick's Records, Rick Tyler, Mr. Rick's Records. He was so kind to send me two CDs from a record show called uh, Bluegrass Today. This is a 1989 interview with Earl Scruggs, and he knows my interest, and we have similar interests in, in uh, country and bluegrass music. Uh, Rick was, uh, he, he sent me a nice note here. Rick was program director back in 1989 at a little country station in Kinston, WKCP, Kicking Country. I actually remember that station. I have uh, family connections to uh, Lenore County in Kinston. Uh, that's where my mother grew up. And my daughter actually lived there up until very recently. And uh, this is just a great interview. Uh, I have CD player in my car, so I drove around whenever I drive. Uh, this is what got played for about three weeks, I think. Uh, great interview telling some wonderful stories. You know how much I love stories. So. Uh, if you don't know Rick's uh, channel, uh, I'll put a link to it below. Please subscribe to him. He's new to the VC and just getting established. So uh, I'd love to see his membership uh, membership or subscriptions grow. Okay? So thanks, Rick, so much for that very, very kind gift. Uh, and the, the next thing I have is uh, at Blind Island, Isaac at Blind Island had a contest uh, few weeks ago and I won that. I was very surprised and very honored to, to have won that. Honored. I mean, they, he drew my name out last. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, honor is probably not the right terminology, but I was very pleased to, uh, to get that. The prize was $50, uh, which he very promptly deposited in my PayPal account. And so uh, I bought some records online. I'll share those with you. These would be what I got from uh, from the proceeds from winning that contest, and it's 15 of them. So yeah, I really racked up. Average, I think I ended up paying uh, 24 something for one batch of records, and <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, 33 dollars and some cents for another. So about 57, 58 dollars total. So so these 15 records cost me eight dollars because because uh, I used my my proceeds from the, winning the contest to pay for almost all of it. Okay, uh, so some bluegrass to start off. Stanley Brothers, bluegrass in concert. Folk concert from the heart of America, Stanley Brothers. This one's on Star Day. 
and this one's on Star Day too. Both of these on Star Day and Gusto, which I believe Star Day and Gusto were kind of the, just different, different labels from the same umbrella company. Uh, and this is what are they calling it? 1983 Stanley Brothers Collector's Edition, Volume Five, and I believe there were there were six volumes of these early recordings. Okay, so I beefed up on my Stanley Brothers collection there. Fiddling Clarence Tater Tate, doing waltzes. I love this. Uh, this is on Rural Rhythm. Look at the uh, the cover here. Now, don't you just love that? Like they just, I mean, they cut. It's like much like they just cut the picture out, like we used to do in school, where we cut pictures out of magazines and glue them in place. You know draw in the background and stuff and that's pretty much what what that one looks like i'm sure they were working on a very limited budget so i'm not making fun i think it's uh, it, it's it's kind of cool the way they did that uh, this is uh more favorite waltzes is what this is called okay and john McEwen playing the banjo right there in that nitty gritty dirt band album there's a solo album from him and uh, it's just John McEwen, it's self-titled, and it is on what record? It's on Warner Brothers. Okay, it's a little. They had a little more money to spend on the uh, on the production and the uh, graphics than uh, Tater Tate did. And then uh, from Eastern North Carolina, near Kenston. Uh, where Rick used to uh, used to work as program director was the great band Super Rick Cowboy Band. Uh, this is like this is the band we followed when uh, when I was uh, in my teens and twenties. And this is uh, if you can't hang, drag your country ass on. And this is a really good album. It's. Uh, their second, I believe. This is from about 1979, excuse me, 1982, somewhere right in there, led, of course, by the great Clyde Maddox, who still has the band, uh, and still uh, 13 here, still plays in that band, even today. Uh, that band started about 1974, five, so you can do the math, that's uh, almost 50 years ago. Still around, okay. And I've already got that album, and, but uh, but I saw it uh, in this the list there on Discogs that the, the seller I was buying from had, and I said, of course I'll pull the trigger and get another copy of that. Something might happen to the first copy. Uh, then David Bromberg, and this is uh, Demon in Disguise, and this includes uh, his version of Mr. Bojangles. For a while, he and Jerry Jeff Walker toured together as a duo and, uh, and they were friends and so I wanted to pick this album up. David Bromberg is a violin buyer and seller now high-end very expensive instruments that's what he does seems like he's in uh, Wilmington Delaware or somewhere like that he, he still plays a little bit but uh, but he, the last I don't know, 20 years or so, he's been uh, been dealing in the musical instruments, okay? And this is what I was going after when I ordered all these albums. This is John Hartford from 1970, and this is uh, Iron Mountain Depot. I'm a big John Hartford fan, and I'm going back and getting those uh, those early albums that I, that I didn't already have. I had most of the stuff from the mid-70s forward. But didn't have uh, didn't have that. Our nitty gritty dirt band. And this is a uh, dream. I always have such nice covers. Always look, felt like you were reading a historical document when you read their album cover. And then some jazz. Well, let me let me transition into the jazz. Uh, continuing with some uh, acoustic string music. This is one of those albums with the long, long uh, title. Uh, Norman Blake, Tuck Taylor, Sam Bush, Butch Robbins, Vassar Clemens, David Holland, Jethro Burns. That's the name of the album. Self-titled, I guess. The only other 
I don't know why they, they, they did it that way, but I guess everybody got equal billing is, is what they're thinking. I know somebody, I believe it was Mazzy uh, in the vinyl community mentioned that if you were trying to set up your stereo and test out equipment and stuff like this, that this album would be very suitable for that because it's so well well mastered and well uh, produced and you can uh, you can separate things things like that. Uh, it's not it's one I've never had although I've got almost all Norman Blake's music and uh, I've got a lot of Vassar Clemens and Sam Bush as well but uh, but I never had this album and I forget what year this is from this is from 1975 okay and on that album was Vassar Clemens on the violin from Florida and Vassar was a very versatile artist and so this is an album it it bears Vassar's name I believe although on the cover it does not give an artist name it just says Hillbilly Jazz and uh, it includes some artists you've already seen here in this set of records uh, it includes besides Vassar Clemens uh, David Bromberg and that's the only one from the other stuff, but uh, DJ Fontana, everybody remember who that is? What's that? That's um, uh, Elvis's drummer, right? I believe so. And uh, it's on Flying Fish. Love Flying Fish label. Classic label there. And it does not say Vassar Clemens on it. It just says Hill, Hillbilly Jazz. But if you look it up, Vassar Clemens is the name it's listed under. Speaking of which, there's another Vassar Clemens. And this one's on here, major label releases Vassar did. Uh, this is on Mercury. And there's uh, John Hartford in there. And several other artists. From, we played the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band a minute ago. Jeff Hanna right there, I believe it is. And uh, there's some other guys, uh, John McEwen, with, saw his album plus it did a great dirt man work so lots of lots of good artists here not pictured here is marty stewart s-t-e-w-a-r-t i don't know if that's a misspelling of the marty stewart we know in uh, country music or not okay and in the last three are jazz so we transitioned uh vassar was kind of mixing uh elements of jazz and bluegrass together and uh so we transitioned from Vassar to uh, another violinist, a guy named Stuff Smith. I know nothing about Stuff Smith, but I saw it, and it was like a dollar and fifty cents, and I ordered it. Uh, Black Violin, this is called, and he's a jazz violinist uh, on 33 MPS stereo records. 33 records, something like that. I don't know. Jazz violin that swings, it says. Anybody know anything about stuff? Love to hear any comments about him. And of course, everybody knows uh, John Coltrane. This is the Master of John Coltrane, Volume 2, to the beat of a different drum. Again, I'm continuing my, uh, my deep dive into jazz. I never know quite what I'm getting, if it's something that's classic or if it's something that was a throwaway item or something that was recorded very well or not. I don't know. But it's fun. This is a promotional use only album, John Coltrane. And finally, Billy Taylor Trio. Of course, he is the pianist, Billy Taylor. And it's Billy Taylor Trio in live performance 21st of June 1977 at the University of Texas in Austin. And side one uh, is Suite for Jazz, Piano, and Orchestra uh, by Billy Taylor. And side two is Echoes of Ellington, which speaks for itself. It's Duke Ellington's music. So uh, I was a student at East Carolina University. Billy Taylor was born in Greenville, North Carolina, home of East Carolina University. And when I was a student there around 1980 or so, I uh, 
this before I transferred to Appalachian State. Uh, when I was a student there, a, a friend of mine, Barrett, who's uh, had a profound influence on my musical uh, journey, a little bit older than me, and uh, he, he uh, we, we went to see some interesting artists and, and that sort of thing uh, over the years, and he introduced me to a lot of great music. He, he calls me up one day and he says, uh, come on and go with me over to the music department uh, tonight. I said, what's going on? He said, this Billy Taylor trio's playing. And I said, who's Billy Taylor? And he explained that this was a very important, a very good jazz musician. And uh, that, that, that I ought to, you know, come on, well, I wasn't doing anything. I said, well, I don't know anything about jazz, but I, I'll, I'll go with you. And I'm so glad I did. It was a wonderful performance, although I was totally out of my depth uh, at that performance. But uh, he, uh, he, his trio put on a great show. I heard some, some, class, some great music. And I'm so glad Barrett exposed me to something out of my comfort zone. Okay. And finally, uh, and uh, he was a, you know, this was just one of those concerts like in the, the auditorium, the small little auditorium in the music, uh, in the music department, you know, performance room or something like that. So it was pretty intimate performance. There were probably 150 people there, maybe 100, uh, no more than 150, I wouldn't think. Okay. So. Uh, the next thing I said, I had a few different things I wanted to cover. A little mishmash. Uh, do y'all find stuff in, in your records when you, when you get them? Now, of course, when you're buying new records, it's pretty typical that you, uh, that you find things uh, like, uh, let's see, uh, if, especially if it's a promo copy, you'll find stuff like this. Uh, the Steve Bassett self-titled on Columbia. Here's a biography of Steve Bassett, uh, the Virginia artist, uh, soul singer more or less. There he is. And a promo photo was in there too. And so I thought that was interesting to find. Uh, I got an uh, Arrogance album and it came with this little sheet. You know, this was back in the 70s before the internet and all that. Little sheet where you could order uh, albums, re records from the band, t shirts, buttons, posters, so on and so forth. Let's see how much uh, albums were. There's one for $12, the others are for $7, $6. The official official T-shirt for arrogance was seven dollars and twenty-five cents, and so I thought that was kind of neat. But also in there was a forty-five from Dog Breath. Their orig originally arrogance was called Dog Breath, and uh, same thing on both sides there. And so it's like uh, when I buy from the record crate, Adam, when he sends me my records, he'll usually drop a couple of little record crate stickers and things like that. Of course, when you're buying new records, almost all new records now come with a digital download. Anybody that wants that digital download, I'll hold that up there for a second. And you're more than welcome to download. I'm not going to ever do it. Larkin Poe, self-made man. So I hope you enjoy that, whoever gets that. Back in the old days before the internet, there were a lot of mail order services when you, especially when you were looking for music that wasn't, you know, the very popular rock stuff, things like that. If you were looking for jazz or country or bluegrass or blues, there would be specialty mail order companies out there that would either have all of those or specialize in, in one or the other. County uh, records would be one example. Uh, Roundup is another out of... Uh, Kind of North Cambridge, Massachusetts, and they'd send you a little little something like this, and and you could send it back in, and they would send you a catalog, and you could order from the catalog. This is a, I think this is affiliated with Rounder Records, uh, but they they offered more than just Rounder Records. They they mentioned uh, this is hundreds more than can't be so neatly. Let's see what's that. 
hundreds of Irish and British Isles records and hundreds more that can't be so neatly categorized. We also carry a full line of nostalgia records, spoken word discs, new wave, rockabilly. We stock the complete catalogs of Rounder, Folkways, Flying Fish, County, Arhuli, uh, Yazoo, plus over 300 other labels on LP, and in many instances, cassette tape. So you would get, you'd, sometimes you'll find these now still. I know Flying Fish, I, I don't, I, it wasn't up there when I pulled all these things, but uh, I know Flying Fish used to have a little postcard in their records. You could send off and get a Flying Fish t-shirt and a catalog, things like that. But then when you crate dig, sometimes you find stuff inside records that for one reason or another are, are put in there. Maybe it's photos of the band or something. So how about this? What band is this? Is that uh, West Bruce and Lane with the, the, the big guy? I don't know. Is that Mountain maybe? Look at it again, folks. Tell me who that is. And here, it doesn't look like all the same guys, but some of the same guys in this photo. Who is this? Obviously, some famous rock band. And I knew this one when I saw it. These three, uh, well, some of them are Arista, you know, PR photos. There's Jerry. Two of Jerry, it's the same thing. Okay, same thing on those two. But here's one looks like somebody took the picture uh, and just you know developed it uh, using their own camera, not not the record company or something or professional photographer. There's Jerry in action right there. What is that guitar called? Is that the Wolf? Somebody remind me. That may not be the Wolf or whatever the name is. I think it's the Wolf, but. Uh, that might not be the, the right guitar. I know uh, Warren Haynes used that guitar when he toured with the orchestras doing Garcia's music. Here's one. Does anybody know this lady? This was included, uh, found it in the album. This is uh, Miss Susie Shea, Glamorous High Camp. So she had comedy in her act. Top drawer attraction. This is obviously something that uh, that went out as a promo to get more bookings. Miss Susie Shea, Glamour's High Camp, Mink, Diamonds, Glorious Gowns, and The Scent of Chanel. Beautiful songs, outrageous comedy, camping and carrying on. So she was going for the glamour. Pretty lady. Don't know what type of music she played. Uh, it wasn't punk, but uh, let's see. Delightful material, cool sass, and hot sauce. Sophistic oh, here we go. Sophisticated rock, blues, ballads, torch, and tang. T A N G tang. I like tang. Astronaut drink it. Slightly shady, but always a lady. Susie Shea brings the nightier circuit, the tradition of the great headliners, professional perfection. And these photos were taken, that's not the best picture of her right there. These photos were taken at the Velvet Cloak Inn at Del Reno's Raleigh, North Carolina, from a performance there, the Velvet Cloak, Del, Velvet Cloak, and Del Rio's in Raleigh. Hmm. Interesting. It, there wasn't an album by this lady when I found this. This was just in another album. So, uh, uh, and and finally, how many others have found this in records when they were crate digging, or when you got them home? I found some. Scandinavian porn in one of them. Uh, I mean, it, it. When I was getting the record out, I realized there was something else in there. I pulled it out. It was like a mail order for. I don't mean video. I don't not not CD, not video. This was old stuff. This was uh, like eight millimeter 
uh, porn. This is, you know, stuff that from maybe the early 60s or 50s or something. I looked at them and went, oh my gosh, what in the world? It was it was a uh, order catalog for it. It had some pretty graphic darn pictures in there though. And then uh, I, I threw it away. Promise, didn't didn't linger over it. And then uh, in a Long Riders album, evidently some guy was hiding his porn from his wife or something. He had I found two uh, DVDs of nasty porn. I mean, just hardcore stuff. I didn't look at it. I I could tell by reading the uh, the, the description, the label, this was some high, hardcore kinky stuff. I tossed them and filed them under 13 as well. But, uh, I mean, what is this? Is this like uh, a thing where guys hide their porn from their, their significant other in records because they're wife or girlfriend doesn't like this band so they stick it there somehow I don't know anyway you find all kinds of things in records and that's just things off the top I mean what have you found uh, in records uh, when you've uh, when you've uh, bought used records I'm sure you a lot of you have found some unusual things as well all right well that's my little uh, VCLT and winnings and mishmash of stuff everybody take care Oh, remember to be kind to your neighbors because we're all neighbors.